Hello everyone, this is the Mining Geologist and I am back again with another very exciting and very informative tutorial. As you can see, we're looking at Micromine again, but this time it is actually the latest version of Micromine, which is Micromine 2022. This version was released a few days ago and I've been waiting for this version for some time now and it was worth the wait. There's plenty of new features that will s save you a lot of time and I I'm really happy to share that with you guys. So if you're interested in mining packages and in Micromine probably make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow me uh, on whatever you find out about me whether it is on LinkedIn or on Facebook or whatever. So to see all the recent updates about this uh, package and other things related to mining engineering, geology, and geoscience in general. Well, this particular video here is not going to be about a recent update about Micromine, but it is going to be uh, about solving an issue that you can face in any package that you're using, which is basically wireframe validation. Sometimes we uh, get, you know, wireframes from our clients or uh, uh, from uh, colleagues who've been uh, who've worked on a specific deposit. So we get the files, load them into the software, and we try to move on with the next step. But then we're stuck at the wireframe validation, and only people using the these mining packages will know how frustrating it is sometimes to actually validate a wireframe and move on to the next step. So, so there are some ways to do this automatically inside any package. In Micromine, for example, if you go to wireframe, you can see that there are some tools about cleaning the wireframe, like clean in here, or ultimately you can go and advanced repair and, you know, check all the different boxes here, like remove T uh, junctions and so on. Uh, and uh, wait for the software to solve the problem for you. But trust me, it's not effective all the time. Sometimes even you do all the different cleaning and uh, validation and closing all the holes using this tool here, you're not going to solve the problem, especially if we're looking at a really complex wireframe. So how do we actually solve this issue without going to the triangulation level and try to you know, uh, recreated triangulations and fix them manually. So uh, sometimes I do that, by the way. So there are some quick hacks that would probably save you some time, but sometime these hacks that I'm going to be showing now, they don't work with every single wireframe, but most of the time they do work. So the first thing is, what if you have a DDM? Well, that's going to be easy. So let's take a look at a DDM here, which is probably this demo. Okay, let's hide this one. So what what I usually do if there are some, you know, some uh, triangulations that are intersecting and things like that, what I would do is the quick hack is to go to Visix and then try to generate some contours to this one, let me make sure it is this one. No, it is not. So it is basically demo and a demo. And let's set the spacing. It really depends on you whether you want a high resolution and you want that to be as close to the original one as possible. So you go with low values like one, for example, or two. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use five. So what I do is I generate a contour because now I'm sure that Micromine, when generating the contours, is not going to make some intersecting contours, okay? So now I'm sure that there will be no intersecting triangles. And what I then do is I just select all of this and go to DDM and create uh, an interactive DDM. So I create another DDM out of these contours and most of the time, and 99% of the time, it's going to be a clean DDM, okay? So that's the thing with the DDMs. What if now you have a closed solid, like for the example of different lithologies or grade uh, uh, wireframes and uh, these things? So 
So what can we do about this one? Well, you can go and generate contours for this one too using the same exact way. So you go to, uh, sorry, you go to Visex and contours, and then in this uh, time we go to uh, lithology, I guess. It's uh, inside the lithology triangulation database, and where is that? So um, lithology, here it is. And I go to this one, this 14, I believe it is uh, 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 for grades. And let me go and set the spacing to 5 again and click on OK. And you can see I can generate contours. But the problem is, so now, because this one is really simple, what I can do is I can go to wireframe and new. And I can start creating a wireframe manually. Uh, sorry for that. So uh, I can go and create a new wireframe, like I said, and go to this one. Sorry, what is happening here? I'm editing this one, so uh, it's not exactly what I wanted. So let me go and um, copy this to actually a string. Let me go to Visex here. Let me select all of these, create a new string. And I'm going to go to design and copy these. Okay. Now there are uh, basically 3D strings in there. Let me go to wireframe now and new wireframe. And let me create a new wireframe. And let me try to do this. So basically that's what you're going to do. Like to create a uh, wireframe. Because what I can do also, let me delete this one is as you can see if you have like if you've chosen for example uh, one meter uh, and it's really big wireframe and a complex one this is gonna take you some time but it is one way to do this okay you can also go to auto build but this is not going to work most of the time if I go and choose these strings and choose a new wireframe you can see that there are some missing places that we can fix that manually but again if there's a lot of you know strings and the wireframe is, is really complex this tool is not going to help you so how to do this in the case of uh, you know solids so the way to do that is let me show you I'm going to uh, go to this one uh, to wireframe and then I'm gonna go to generate strings and I'm gonna go and create some slices so basically like I'm going to tell Micromind for every one meter okay go and create a slice uh, I mean like a section and digitize uh, you know um, where the wireframe intersect with that specific you know uh, section so let's create every one meter we create a slice of that wireframe okay I'm gonna call this test and I'm gonna run this yes override that and it will generate us this one so you can choose let's say five meters or every two meters or every whatever you want it really depends on you and depends on the wireframe that you want to create so let's compare this one with the original uh, wireframe you can see it is pretty much giving us the shape that we want now all what you have to do is because so all of this assuming that this wireframe is actually not valid and we've been struggling to validate this one so then what you can do is you go to the amazing implicit modeling tools in Micromine and we have this uh, tool called Polygon which will use the RBF function which is uh, basically an interpolation function. You can go and read about that in uh, on Google. It's the best, you know, a mathematical uh, function that will give you, you know, a smooth interpolation of your ore body, and it's the one used for implicit modeling in most of the mining packages. So we use this one, and basically the input is going to be our strings and now for the option you don't have to worry about this basically you can play around with these to get the a wireframe that you want we can cover this in another 
you know, uh, all of these different, uh, you know, tools in another uh, topic. But basically, we're, we're going to use the uh, default values. By the way, you can go and calculate the extent in here, or you can edit that if you want uh, here. But we're happy with that because Mike Mind did the job, and it is calculated automatically. And then what we can do is we are going to generate a new wireframe inside the new wireframes. We call that test and we want that to be close to the to the bounding box, the one that we've created in here. And that's it. We click on run. Let's override that one. And now Micromind did the calculation in the background and guess what? We have this wireframe that we are sure and most of the time, I will say that, again, most of the time, it is actually going to be valid. And you can see that it is valid. And let's compare that to with the original one. And you can see that they almost, they are almost identical. And if we increase that one meter slicing, let's say zero point, every 0 0.5, we, all, we are going to get the almost the exact shapes. And like I've mentioned that since these slices have been created in a way that they are not intersecting each other then the rbf function is not going to uh, create some intersecting you know triangulation and this will work most of the time so let me know what you think about this small hack or maybe if you have any other ideas to solve this wider framing issue and i will be happy to uh read all your commands and see you in another amazing video.